In this uh, third lesson on dummy variables, uh, we will expand to the uh, use of dummy variables in the form of called uh, slope dummies. So I will explain first what does the slope dummy mean. So recall that in the in the previous all of the previous uh, variants of the of the dummy variable models, uh, we have uh, used dummy variables to shift the regression line in a parallel manner between different categories could be also ordinal variables but between different categories we would have a, a parallel shift of the regression line but it might be also the case that uh, that uh, the slope of the the our quantitative variable differs across uh, different groups of uh, observations so recall that i i finished the previous lesson or to the example where i I classified the apartments in ESPO to three groups. We had one room apartments, uh, two room apartments, and then other group which, which has three rooms or more. We can call that uh, apartment type. So it would be interesting to see that uh, does the marginal, marginal impact of, uh, of size in square meters uh, on, on uh, price uh, differ across these uh, different uh, apartment types. And, and we can model it uh, using so-called slope dummies. So um, we discussed earlier how to form this kind of dummy variables. So we needed to just uh, code this, uh, this uh, text. Uh, for example, when we know that it's one room apartment, uh, we would just generate this kind of binary zero one variable where, where, where the apartment gets value of one, or sorry, the the variable dummy variable gets value of one when the apartment has one room and zero otherwise, and then we generate another dummy variable where where the variable gets value of one when there's two rooms in the apartment and zero otherwise, and then we have this reference category, uh, which uh, which just uh, so this zero value which gets uh, we have the reference category of this uh, larger apartments with three rooms or more. But we do not gen we do not create any any dummy variable for that. So simply inserting these dummies to the regression line uh, would shift the intercept. But in this regression equation that I've also in here highlighted with the red color, now I take also the uh, products of the dummy variable and the size. So if you are using, for example, Excel, then then you can just uh, create a new variable. Where you multiply the dummy variable with the size and same is true in in, in stata you can just uh, create a new variable which is the product of the dummy variable and the and the quantitative variable in this case the size and then you have this kind of new variable in the regression equation so normally you don't uh, uh, do this multiplication within the regression line but rather you create first a new variable which which takes the value of this product Okay, so uh, what's the graphical interpretation, first of all? So when we do the slope dummy, then in this case, uh, the regression line doesn't uh, shift in a parallel manner, but it actually uh, rotates along this kind of intercept. So now the intercept beta one is um, the same for both groups. But, uh, but the slope differs depending on if the dummy variable takes value of uh, zero or one. So the, for the reference category, uh, the slope of the X variable is uh, simply beta two. And uh, so therefore this uh, red color line rep represents a regression line for the, for the reference category. And then for, the, for the, those observations for which this dummy variable takes the value of one. So because we multiplied the dummy variable with this uh, with this x variable, then the slope becomes effectively the sum of beta two and the dummy coefficient of the dummy variable delta. So for that uh, that uh, that group, then uh, the regression line is this blue colored line. If you find it uh, difficult to follow, then then I would advise you to go through this uh, lecture slides uh, more slowly through and carefully. To, to understand this graphical illustration. So in practice, then I have also done this uh, uh, regression example. 
So also the use of slope dummies can be a viable way to proceed. Uh, so now I have also here highlighted uh, the, uh, the interesting variables with the red color, so to speak. Of course, this, uh, this uh, regression model includes also many other uh, dummy variables and, uh, and quantitative variables as well. But um, so our main interest has been in the marginal effect of size in square meters. And when I use the slope dummy, then, uh, then uh, for the one bedroom apartments, then the marginal effect of the size in square me meters becomes the sum of uh, this. Uh, it's not only this uh, coefficient 1,295, which is this kind of uh, slope uh, coefficient of the slope dummy for one bedroom apartment, but we also need to add this uh, uh, marginal impact of the reference category. So the so the marginal effect of size in square meters is uh, is uh, three thousand two hundred seventy nine, and this is the marginal effect that applies to the reference category, which is the three room apartments or more. Okay, so this I repeat that is three thousand two hundred seventy nine euros per square meter. That's the marginal impact of uh, size in square meters in the three room or bigger apartments, three rooms or more, more rooms, apartments. For one bedroom apartments, the marginal effect is uh, 3,279 plus 1,295. So it becomes uh, more than uh, 4,400. Start to be more closer to this, uh, what, we, what we estimated before. And uh, then interestingly, for the two two room apartments, uh, the marginal effect of square meter is uh, uh, obtained as the sum uh, three thousand two hundred seventy nine plus one hundred and forty three. So in effect, then it would become like uh, three thousand and uh, four hundred something. Okay, so we see that there is a huge impact on the on the marginal effect of square meters if it is one room apartment. Or, or other. Notice also if it apply again statistical testing to test significance. So this uh, slope dummy for one room apartments is, uh, is very highly significant. This p-value is very close to zero. But if you look at this uh, two room apartments, then the slope dummy is not significant. So p-value is 0 0.23. Uh, but uh, if we compare that to the 5% or 1% significance level, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there is no, no impact. So there is very large and uh, significant impact uh, on, the, on the marginal value of square meters when the apartment time type is one room apartment, but for two room apartments and other, there is no significant difference. And that's that's quite quite interesting. In some sense, it's natural that uh, that uh, the square meters are most, most scarce in, in one room apartments. And, and when you get to two room and, and more, then the marginal effect of the square meters is, uh, is uh, significantly smaller, about uh, 3,300 euros. Okay. So uh, this, in my view, this, uh, this example nicely illustrates the potential to use the, the slope dummies uh, uh, in my experience, uh, the intercept dummies are much more more commonly used, but uh, but uh, with the creative uh, and innovative use of uh, slope dummies, you can actually potentially get some very very interesting findings. So so I would uh, encourage you to keep in mind this possibility to use dummy variables also as uh, as slope dummies. It's not technically very difficult. You just need to create a new variable where you multiply the dummy variable with the with a variable of interest. And, and particularly, you don't need to have these dummy variables necessarily for each and every uh, variable in your regression equation. It might, might help to, to give a richer picture if you, if, you, if you apply the slope dummies to the, to the main variable of interest or main variables of interest. So notice that in this example, um, I have often been focusing on this uh, marginal effect of the size in square meters and then then in this case also also 
I'm not even talking about many other other variables. They are just kind of used there as uh, additional controls. But uh, but the main attention here is on the size in square meters, and and uh, that's also very often uh, the the way of using the slope dummies is to is to then then enrich the the uh, interpretation of the variable of interest. Uh, you don't need to necessarily include slope dummies to each and every every variable in your regression equation. In fact, I want to want to expand also this that okay. How does it then differ if we, if we include very, very many dummy variables, both intercept and slope, uh, from the situation that we would actually run two separate regressions for these two different groups? So think about this um, situation where we have just this kind of yes or no type of uh, uh, variable. Like, like we had this, we started with the elevator. So suppose that we have now this kind of uh, elevator dummy. And uh, so it's either 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 zero and one, and uh, and there's no other other dummy variables. And for sake of simplicity, I also also focus now on the single regression case. So on this slide, I I um, formally justify that okay, it's in fact equivalent to to run two separate regressions. We could just uh, partition our sample to uh, the group of apartments that have elevator. And a group of that don't have elevator and, and run two separate regressions for these two groups. In fact, it's same as, as we would uh, model dummy variable for the both the intercept and for the slope. Okay. And here's also an illustration. So, so uh, how, how it would look like that, uh, that uh, for example, if we have this uh, uh, red regression line representing the, the group of apartment that do not have elevator, and uh, then the blue line would be illustrating the case that there is there is there is elevator so if you use both a uh, intercept dummy and the slope dummy then uh, both the intercept and slope changes so in effect we have two completely separate regressions then so also also then uh, that means that uh, that uh, it might be simply in practice easier to just then run two separate regressions rather than include this uh, uh, intercept and slope dummies systematically for each and every variable, especially when you have multiple multiple variables in your in your regression equations. So, in that sense, uh, um, the use of uh, of uh, two separate regressions may be convenient when you really really want to uh, model the heterogeneity of the of the two groups. But there are also some some advantages of pooling the subsamples. Uh, one is that you can, of course, then test significance by by t test. You can also test uh, the joint significance with the so-called f test, which we will introduce in the next theme, theme number six. And uh, then, of course, the use of the of the intercepts and slopes is that uh, that uh, you do not necessarily need to put uh, put uh, these uh, slope dummies for each and every variable so typically in our days and our data sets we have so many variables that uh, that uh, we can we can maybe focus on more more fine and detailed modeling of uh, of the main variables of interest and and then it may be maybe enough to just have intercept dummies for some other other variables that are mainly used for 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 uh, purpose of modeling them as a so-called control variables. Okay. So I come back to these uh, these type of discussions also in the in the in the many many following themes like I mentioned that we will discuss this uh, this uh, testing of joint significance with the f text in this theme number 6. I also want to clarify the terminology so so the term dummy variable is, uh, is used when, when the, the variable is coded as a binary zero and one. But also there's another thing is that it, it's, it's, it refers to that specifically use of this kind of binary variable as X variable, meaning explanatory variable. Uh, it's also possible to uh, model binary variables as the dependent variables. And this is then brings us to the so-called probit and logit models, which we will uh, discuss in more detail in, in, in theme number 12. So that's the last theme of the course.
So dummy variable also has this connotation that, uh, that it should be an explanatory variable. But when we model binary variables as the dependent variable, which we haven't done so far, then, then it comes to the so-called limited dependent variables and, and probit or logit regressions. Okay. So just I want to mention that it's also possible to have this kind of binary variables as a dependent variable, and uh, we will come back to that in, in theme number 12. Okay. So I will also continue on the on the statistical testing of the of the of this kind of multiple categories uh, modeled by dummy variables but i think it is more natural to talk it in the context of uh, model specification which is our next theme where i will also introduce the introduce the f test okay so this completes the discussion of the of the of the dummy variables thanks for your attention and bye bye